Hey guys, if you've been watching my restoration series on the Philco 60 and the GE212 and so on, you've seen me spend weeks polishing the chassis, refinishing the cabinets and so on, doing alignments. Well, I don't want to give you the impression that you really need to do all that stuff or have all this equipment and so on to, to get a radio working. So what I thought I would do is try to get this radio working in one night using just some basic tools, a meter, and a soldering iron, and uh, some new capacitors. What this is, is a Philco 37-611, also known as a bullet radio or big bullet. Uh, and this is a, a smaller version, I guess you call it a little bullet, it's a Philco 3810. This is actually the first antique radio I ever restored uh, a few years ago. And uh, since then, uh, I've gotten a lot better at it, so I'm going to give this another uh, overhaul. I showed it in some earlier videos. If you go back and search for Philco 3810, you'll see me talking a bit more about this. And as usual, I got sidetracked by other things, so I didn't actually finish it. But uh, coming up soon, uh, indeed I will. But in this video, I'm going to focus on this guy. I got this last summer uh, off of Craigslist. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Uh, I've never taken the chassis out or really uh, looked too, too closely at it. A few bad things right off I noticed though when I got it. It has been refinished and pretty badly. Uh, somebody just basically stripped it down and then just coated it with polyurethane. Didn't fill in the grain, didn't use any stain or, or anything. And probably the worst is that there was some damage that they... Uh, looks like they filled in maybe with some wood filler or something. But uh, they made no effort whatsoever to match the color or the green or anything. <laughs> so, there's a very noticeable uh, yellow section down here. And uh, some other areas. A bit of damage up here. Uh, so, one of these days I'll strip it down, I suppose. But uh, not right now. Also, a bit of veneer missing there. Another thing is that the grill cloth is not the original. It's not horrible, but I believe it should be... Uh, more like this and this this is new cloth but this is exactly the right pattern for this uh, for this radio there were a, a number of versions of this set that uh, had various chassis this I think is the cheapest of them all two band radio uh, AM broadcast band and shortwave looks like 2.3 megahertz to 7.4 Huh, that's kind of weird. Oh, it's actually a three-band radio. It's just it's, the chassis has slipped down so much So the broadcast band is down there at the bottom And then there are two shortwave bands the one like I just said uh, going to 2.5 to 7.4 and the other one is About seven and a half. Oh, so it picks up where the other one leaves off. It goes from about seven and a half to 22 all right, now, the reason I said this is the cheapest version of this radio is that this is a transformer with set. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just five tubes. Uh, runs right off the AC line and uh, just rectifies it like an All-American 5 radio. Three filter capacitors. One, two, three. And uh, like I said, five tubes. There's one tube, two tubes, three, four. And there's a fifth one way up front. And there's the speaker, it's a field coil speaker. It looks to be in good shape from what I can see it from the back side. I don't see any big holes in it or anything. There's the paper tag. One thing I did notice when I got this is that the audio output tube is not what the original calls for, which is a 25A6. I think this is actually a 25L6 if memory serves. Yeah, 25L6. I'll go with that. I'm not even sure I have any 25A6s. Um, I looked up the specs and I think this provides more output power. I'm not sure if the bias is quite right, but uh, see how it goes. Not the original power cord, but it looks serviceable. I'm not going to plug it in, of course, without going over the chassis first and recapping it. 
I went uh, online to Nostalgia Air and downloaded and printed out the schematic, which originally came from uh, a writer's compendium of schematics. And as often is the case with these, it's very, very hard to read. Especially the part numbers in the schematic. The numbers just just not very distinct at all. So it's pretty hard to match up down here, but I'm hoping that when I look at the chassis itself, I can just read the part values off the components. Alright, so the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out the chassis and as often as the case with these Filcos from the late 30s the speaker is hardwired to the chassis so I got two choices one I can just remove them both and be very careful and just kind of have to you know, protect the speaker while I work on the chassis or I can pop off this cover and unsolder these four wires I'll take a quick look and if it's not a major hassle I'll do that otherwise I'll just try to Work on the chassis with the speaker attached. Those wires came off quite easily. I just had to heat each terminal and uh, untwist the wire a little bit. So now, let's take a look at what we have here. Okay. Looks to be in pretty good shape overall. Hood for the uh, dial back lights a little loose, but uh, oh, that's cool. The 6A8 is a glass type. All the Filcos back in uh, 37, 38, they would have used glass tubes, not metal tubes. Quite often, these tubes have been replaced uh, sometime like in the 40s, and they're they're usually metal. But the originals, if you want to be truly authentic, they should be glass like that. Likewise, glass, glass, and so on. Let's see, it's not a Filco though, it's an RCA, so maybe it's an old replacement. Oh, these are in really good shape. Most of the Filcos in the 30s had these rubber mounts on the front to keep the chassis from smashing into the front of the cabinet. The bottom shock mounts are, are completely gone. Usually they're rotted away, or usually they're hard rubber, I should say, but these are just completely gone. That's why this was bottomed out so bad and I couldn't even see the bottom broadcast dial. Speaking of which, dial looks to be in really, really good shape. But if it wasn't, uh, there are reproductions readily available that look uh, very, very good. Tunes nicely. I'm sure a little bit of oil and grease on the bearings and it'll turn even better. That's interesting. There's a hole in the top of each of these capacitors. Well, maybe somebody's already restored this. I doubt it though, <laughs> considering how dusty and dirty it is. That's something I've never seen before. There's a metal plate covering the whole bottom of the chassis. Usually these are just open to the air. Yeah, let's see. Two, two totally different types of connectors. One is a hex nut and the other one is some kind of odd Y-shaped connector. Bake light block. I wasn't sure if this would have any or not. It looks like there's two of them. Oh, well, it certainly hasn't been recapped. These are all the old original Filcos. Except for this. Looks like somebody did bypass some of the electrolytics ages ago. That might make this a little bit more of a challenge to figure out, decipher. Geez, they use masking tape for, <laughs> for the wires, not even electrical tape. Well, that's not very safe. Speaking of safe, this is a hot chassis, so I will definitely use an isolation transformer. Let's see, uh, point with. This will do. So, AC power comes in here, and one side goes right to the rectifier tube, and the other goes to a switch, and then pilot light, a dropping resistor, the tubes, another dropping resistor. 
So I can see why. If you got these filaments up, you got 25, 25, and then three sixes. So 78 volts, which you know is far less than the 120 coming into the outlet. So I imagine these two resistors kick out some heat. And so on and so forth. So I think the biggest challenge is going to be figuring out <laughs> what somebody did in trying to undo this damage and figure out how to, this should uh, be wired in. So one, I'm definitely going to clean that up, and two, I got to figure out what, what, what's going on here. Otherwise, just start snipping and replacing. I enlarged the schematic and printed out another copy. It's a little bit more legible now. And I've been going through the radio, and I kind of have my bearings now, I think. I cut out the old power cord and that uh, replacement capacitor. Uh, so here's one of the power leads that goes to the power switch. It's really old, crumbly insulation, so that whole wire will have to get replaced. And these bits of wires here where they're spliced, and that's where those replacement capacitors were. This is the ugliest one, because this wire... This part of the bundle that goes to the speakers and then was spliced into. I'm going to unwrap this and hopefully things aren't too ugly under there. And then uh, I think I will put a heat shrink tubing uh, over that. This huge thing along the back side here is power resistor that corresponds to this guy and to this guy. That's what burns off that extra voltage because the tube filaments don't add up to the line voltage. I imagine this whole side of the radio gets pretty toasty. Uh, here's one of the main filter caps. I took some of the cardboard sleeves off to try to see the ratings, but uh, it's just a part number on there. It doesn't say the actual voltage. I was a little surprised that the replacement capacitor, they're only 150 volt caps. I'm used to seeing more like 475 volt caps in these, so... Uh, I'm definitely going to use um, higher voltage capacitors for my replacements. Couldn't get this cardboard tube off, unfortunately. Um, but it appears to be a two section. And the other third capacitor down in there, that's also a two section. So all told, five electrolytics to be replaced. Turns out these two Bakelite block caps actually aren't that bad. I think this one only has a single capacitor inside, and this has two capacitors in it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take these out and uh, restuff them. I just think it's just far more practical because there's all these tie points on here and such. Plus, I got to get um, I got to get the old capacitors out because they made short, and uh, you know that would that would mess things up pretty badly. It'll be a little bit tedious, unfortunately, got to take all these wires off, but. Uh, Gotta do what I gotta do. I'm making slow but steady progress. It's quite frustrating finding all these old hacks and uh, repairs, I guess you could call them, but I don't know. <laughs> One thing I found especially odd is that this rectifier is a two section, uh, but they, they just short the plates and the cathode together to increase the current capacity, I assume. Uh, but what was odd is that uh, the two cathodes were not connected together. And that was one of the wires that was caught and then spliced into a capacitor and whatnot. But uh, even with that capacitor in the circuit, I couldn't see any way that those cathodes were ever getting hooked together. And I suppose that could kind of work if one cathode is going to some stuff and one's going to the other because the plates are in parallel. But... Uh, I, I shorted them back together, and hopefully that's not going to cause any problems. Uh, a few other things that were confusing is that I found a 0.05 microfarad capacitor over here, and there was also one over here, and there's only one in the whole radio. I believe this is the original, it's got the Filco, the part number and everything, but it wasn't wired in properly. <laughs> Whereas this one was, and this is the replacement. So again, very confusing. I ended up cutting out what appeared to be the original one. It just didn't make any sense. And I put a new one in over here following the schematic. So I really hope that there weren't any circuit variations. Um, maybe I, I should go online and do a little research on that. It's just like with that Fulco 60, there were like 10 circuit changes over the years. And 
uh, you know, I don't want to go down a path where I'm really screwing things up. Um, oh, and something else I just discovered is that this Bakelite block cap here just has a single capacitor in it. Uh, but I noticed there was nothing connected to the, this terminal. And you can see the little fine wire in there. That's one end of the capacitor, and this is the other. Um, and I noticed that this capacitor seems to be a bit newer, and it's not a Filco cap. So, again, this is another old repair. So I believe that the, this wire, this resistor, were originally connected over to here. So that capacitor will go, and I'll use this block. So like I was hoping as I'm taking out all these repairs and hacks and whatnot, uh, it's opening up and getting much easier to work on. Oh, I also undid that uh, spliced in ugliness here and put a piece of heat shrink tubing over it, so it's a lot neater now. I can see why this Bakelite block capacitor was bypassed. A bunch of the tar had leaked out, so it was probably uh, shorting out and overheating badly. Other one seems to be in better condition. While taking those out, I found an oddball component that I think is probably a repair, but I've never seen a component quite like this, so I'm not sure what this is. I think it's a resistor, but I'm not sure. At any rate, uh, like I was saying, I'm going to have to go off the schematic because uh, I'm just not sure what the, some of these changes were all about. I did go online and I did find some service bulletins and there were some revisions made to this radio, 37611, uh, but nothing significant. Uh, they upped the value of the capacitors here, for example, from 4 and 8 microfarad to both 10 microfarads and a couple of the tweaked capacitor values, but no major rewiring changes or anything like that, so I think I'll be safe to just uh, go off the schematic. Okay, so this area is uh, pretty well done. Uh, it's much easier to work on now, much cleaner with all the extra crap uh, removed. I still do have to, of course, deal with these capacitors. Single 16 microfarad electrolytic over here, and then there's a two section down in there, but uh, I'm going to save that for last, like I said before. So now moving on over to this side. This cap puzzled me at first. Some of these capacitors, they only have a Filco part number on them. They're not marked with a capacitance or a voltage value. And this part number, 34227, that's not in the parts list. <laughs> so uh, not only did I not, is the value not marked, I couldn't find it any, on this anywhere. So again, I had to trace out the wiring. And I eventually figured out that it is... Uh, it's a uh, I do believe it is this guy, which is a 0.25 microfarad cap. Not too surprising as well, because it's, it's large, and that's the largest uh, paper capacitor value in the radio, so it's not too surprising it's the largest capacitor. So, I've got a few of those to do, and then this guy, and that one, which is kind of tough. And then I found out that there's one more lurking in the radio, way down in there, which I think is going to be physically impossible to remove. So I'm going to leave that in there uh, and power the radio up once I finish doing the rest of the work and see how it works. Uh, I think the only way to get at that is to remove this central floating uh, chassis. Or uh, just get some, maybe some very fine surgical like uh, um, instruments and dig down in there and uh, clip that out. 